What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna to put together some of the things that we've learned and model a house inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember that you can download that free beginner keyboard shortcut guide at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash beginner. But what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and we wanna start by drawing the footprint of our house. And to do that, we're going to use the rectangle tool. So you're just going to tap the R key on your keyboard, and then we just want to move our mouse and set a base point somewhere. In this case, just somewhere in space is going to be fine. A lot of the time I might try to do it off of the origin, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to tap the R key, and then I'm just going to type in a value of 20 foot comma 20 foot. And what that's gonna do when I hit the enter key is it's gonna draw a 20 foot by 20 foot rectangle. And we're just gonna make this a very simple house for right now. Um, probably in the next video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about maybe modeling a floor plan. For now, we're just gonna draw a simple house. And so what we wanna do is we wanna use the push pull tool to extrude this up to the height um, before our roof starts sloping for the sloped roof. So to do that, you can tap the P key on your keyboard, mouse over a face, and remember that we just activated the push pull tool, but we want to single click, we want to move our mouse, and we want to type in a value. So in this case, I'm going to say that it's going to be 10 feet right here. So what we've done is we've drawn a box that's 20 foot by 20 foot by 10 foot. And now what we need to do is we need to add our roof slope in here. And so there's a couple different ways that you could do this. You could just draw a line across the middle and then use the move tool to move that line up. Um, the only problem I have with that is it's not super precise. What we want to do instead is we want to use the protractor tool, which is a tool over here in the large tool set. If you don't see the large tool set, you can just right click and you can click on the option for large tool set but I'm gonna click in here and that's gonna allow me to use the protractor in order to draw a line or a guide at an angle. So notice how if I mouse over these different faces, this is gonna to align to those faces. I just want to stay aligned to this front face. Um, if you put your mouse over this corner and it's kind of laying down like this, what you can do is you can tap the left arrow key in order to lock this protractor vertically. But then I'm gonna click on the middle here I'm gonna click on the central point to set a base point, kind of like we do with the rotate tool. And then I'm gonna move my mouse up and I'm gonna type in a value of whatever I want this to be for my roof slope. So say this was going to slope at an angle of 30 degrees, I could type in a value of 30 degrees. And then we can do the same thing over here. So just move our mouse, type in a value of 30 degrees. And now we have kind of the footprint of our roof. Well, then you can just come in here and you could just draw edges right here in order to fill this in. So now we've got a face that's standing up like this. And what I wanna do is I wanna tap the P key on my keyboard in order to push pull this back and single click. Now, one thing to note about this is occasionally when you do this, right, if you tap the P key and you push pull this back and it's not doing it right now, but sometimes this face shows up as a hollow face if it does that, just tap the control key in order to um, enter create new face mode and you should be fine. But then you just wanna move your mouse right here to the back of your wall and you want to click. And then you can tap the E key and click and drag across these guides in order to erase them. And in this case, we can actually erase this edge and this edge as well, but you might wanna wait for a second actually. So. What I wanna do now is roofs don't really look like this, right? Roofs, roofs have a little bit of a thickened portion to them and they kind of overhang the face of your building. So what we wanna do in this situation is we wanna use the offset tool in order to offset this out so that we have a better face to extrude. So to do this, I'm gonna tap the F key on my keyboard or you could click on the offset tool but then you wanna single click on that face and move your mouse. And notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna offset all of the edges of your roof out. And in this case, we're going to tell it to offset these by whatever the thickness of your roof is supposed to be. In this case, I might type in a value of like six inches and hit the enter key. Well then, what we've got is we've got a face in here and I'm gonna tap the space key to get back to my select tool. But we've got a face in here that we can extrude in order to create our roof. Now, one thing that you might do, depending on the style of roof, 
that you want to create is you might use the line tool and go ahead and continue this edge down like this. And then you could even draw your line up from there in order to get more of a vertical face in here. But now I'm gonna use the eraser tool to clean up. So I'm gonna tap the E key. I'm gonna click and drag across these edges. So all of these extra edges in here that I don't need, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete them out like this. Well now I can use that push pull tool to extrude the roof forward like this, and you can extrude it to whatever depth you want. So I might say that there's gonna be a 12 inch overhang, but then I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna push pull this to the back side of my wall right here. And then I'll just do it one more time to give me that 12 inch overhang. So I'm gonna type in a value of 12, hit the enter key. And I'm gonna tap the E key and I'm gonna erase out this extra geometry that's being created in here, just like this. So now we've got a very simple house model, right? And what we wanna do now is we want to add a door to our house model. So to add the door, what we want to do is we want to find the location that that door is going to go first. And I like to use guides to do this. So what we can do is we can activate this tape measure tool right here, single click on it, and notice how this is going to give me this tape measure in here. You want the little plus that's in here. That means that this is in create guide mode. So what that means is that means you need to tap the control key if you don't see the little plus until it shows up. Now, what I can do is I can mouse over this line right here. I can single click and I can set a distance. So in this case, I'm gonna say the door is 36 inches off of this wall. Well, notice what that does is that allows me to create a vertical line or a vertical guide 36 inches off of this wall. And then I'm just gonna click on this again. Notice how I can create another guide in this direction. I'm gonna type in a value of 36 inches hit the enter key. So now it's given a, me a three foot wide door. Well, then I can also create a guide based on the bottom. So I'm just gonna move my mouse up. I'm gonna type in a value of seven feet and hit the enter key. And so what that's done is that's given me a basic space where my door is going to go. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw a rectangle. So I'm gonna tap the R key on my keyboard. I'm gonna single click, move my mouse, and then click again. And so now, I've got the outline of a door in here. So the problem with this door is it's a little bit boring and it also doesn't have a lot of detail associated with it. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap the F key and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna offset this in in order to give us the frame. And so you can either offset it in if your door is going to be less than three feet wide um, on the leaf or out if it's going to be more. But we're gonna offset this in by a value of, we'll call it two inches. And so what that's done is that's given me a general door shape in here, but notice how this frame doesn't go all the way to the ground like it would in the real world. So this kind of looks like a window frame. So I'm just gonna tap the L key and draw a line down from this corner and down from this corner. And then I'm gonna erase out these edges. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me a hole in my wall. Well, in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna push pull this back to whatever the thickness of your wall might be. So in this case, we might say that it's a six inch wall. So I'm just gonna draw my frame in like this. And sometimes you might push pull this out just a bit to get a little bit of depth on the front of your building. I'm um, just kind of depending on the way that this might actually sit in here. But then I'm gonna take the whole thing, I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm going to make it a component. And we're just gonna call this door frame dash three foot by seven foot right here. And so basically what I've done is I've just kind of grouped this out so that it's, own, it's its own geometry. It's not merged with the face of this building anymore. But then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a door leaf in here. And so to do that, I might just um, draw a rectangle from the midpoint right here to the midpoint right here. And notice how this should snap to that because I'm using the inferencing. Well, that's gonna be my door leaf. Well, in this case, I'm just gonna push pull my door leaf back by whatever the thickness of your door is gonna be. Again, we can call it two inches. But in this case, what I wanna do is I just wanna triple click on it. And so when I triple click on it, that's gonna pick up all 
of the connected geometry. And since this geometry is separated from my building geometry by the frame, which is grouped, I'm only picking up the geometry that's in my door leaf. But I'm gonna right click on it, I'm gonna make this a component, and we're just gonna call this door leaf three foot by seven foot. And in this case, that leaf is actually a little smaller than three foot by seven foot, but that's fine for right now. And then what I might do is I might take both of these, so I'm just gonna click on this one, do a shift click and select this one. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make it a group. And if I jump into my outliner over here, notice how I can see that group. Well, I can rename this door. So I'm just going to right click on it, click on rename. And I'm gonna type in door dash three foot by seven foot. And notice how if I click the little drop down here, I can see those two components in here, and I might actually want this door to be a component. So I'm just going to either right click on it here or in the outliner, those kind of work interchangeably. And I'm gonna click on make component and we'll go ahead and click on create. Make sure you've checked this box for replace selection with component when you do this. But now I have a door in my wall. Well, I've already got a guide in here working with the height um, that like a window might go to. So let's go ahead and let's add a window. So I'm just going to use the tape measure tool and I'm going to set up a window location. So say this is also gonna be three feet off the wall and say that my window is going to be four feet wide like this. I can use those guides in order to rough out the entire size of my window. So say this is gonna be a four foot by three foot window. I now have these guides in here that I can use in order to draw this. So we're just going to use the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle. And in this case, we're going to make this a very simple window, right? We don't want to get too crazy with it for right now. Um, we can definitely talk about more complex ways to create windows, but I'm just going to tap the F key to offset this in, and we're going to offset this in by a value of two inches. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and delete out this face for right now, just so I can see what I'm doing. But I'm gonna push pull this back six inches. And notice how this is doing that thing I was talking about with the roof where this face is hollow. So if you ever get it where the face is hollow, like this, all you wanna do is just tap the control key on your keyboard to go into create new face mode. And when you do that, your window is then going to create a new face on that surface instead of showing, showing up hollow. I'm just gonna type in a value of six inches right here. And again, I'm gonna push pull this out just a tad um, so that it aligns with the frame over here. Notice how that way it's not just sitting completely flush with the wall. But in this case, I'm gonna take this whole thing I'm going to select it. Make sure you drag the box around all of this and none of the geometry in the back when you do this, but then I'm going to right click and I'm gonna make it a group. Or you could make it a component actually. So we're gonna right click and make it a component. Um, notice how this gave us the option to glue to a face and cut an opening. I'm going to uncheck this and set glue to none for right now. We don't want this to do that just because it gets a little bit confusing, but we can talk about that in a future video. But in this case, I'm just gonna type in window dash four foot by three foot and hit the create button right here. Now notice that this came in here and this added a face in the middle of this. That's because I converted this to a component, well, you may need to come in here and just redraw a rectangle from this point to this point and delete out this face because it basically healed the face back in inside of this wall. And then within this, within this assembly, I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and draw a rectangle from here to here in order to set my window glass. And so I might double click on that window and make it a group or make that glass a group. Um, that might make that might make adding materials a little bit later a little bit easier. But now we've got a house with a door and a window and we're ready to start adding some textures. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to edit and I'm gonna click on the option for delete guides. That's gonna get rid of all of the guides that we have in this, um, in this model because we don't really need them anymore. And so we haven't really talked about adding materials yet in this series. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool called the paint bucket tool. So the paint bucket tool is a tool that you can access over here, up here, or by tapping the B key on your keyboard. So notice how when you do that, you tap the B key, 
that's gonna pop up a little window over here in your tray, or for my Mac users, it's just gonna pop up a window in space right here. But what we wanna do is we wanna add some materials. And notice how there's a number of preset materials in here, and we can select any of them. Well, in this case, let's start by adding some roofing. So I'm gonna click under roofing right here, and I'm going to select one of these shingle materials. So maybe this one right here. And all I'm gonna do, just come in here and click on that surface, and that's going to paint that material on the surface. Now you can definitely download custom materials, but we're not gonna get into that in this video. In this video, we just wanna add some simple materials to our house. So in this case, say that this is going to be a brick house. So we're going to click in here. We're gonna to go to the brick cladding and siding. We're gonna pick a brick material. So maybe we'll go with this tumbled brick right here. Well, notice what I can do is I can rotate around using the orbit tool and I can apply a brick material to all of these surfaces just like this. So that was really easy to do, but I don't necessarily like the way that this is just an uninterrupted brick material, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna split this up and we're gonna say maybe that the brick only goes up to a certain height in here. Now, what you could do to do that is you could come in here and you could draw lines all the way around here, just like manually. Um, that's a perfectly valid way of doing this, but it's kind of time consuming, right? So what we might do instead is I'm going to undo that and I'm going to select the edges on the bottom of my house like this. So I'm just gonna do a shift click, shift click, shift click. I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. So I'm gonna tap M, I'm gonna tap control to make sure I'm in copy mode. And I'm gonna copy this up like this. So when we do that, I can move up to the bottom of my window right here. Well, notice what I did when I did that is I split out this bottom face and this top face. So we can use that in order to split this out and then apply a different material to the top part of our house. So say we wanted this to have a white siding material, I could click in here and I can apply that white siding material to these top areas because they're now separate faces because we split them. Now, one other thing that I wanna do is I want to create a brick or a stone cap around here. So to do that, what I wanna do is I wanna select all of the edges like this. And remember, there's no way to like extrude edges out in SketchUp. So what we wanna do instead is I wanna use the offset tool. And so when I offset this, notice how this is gonna let me offset this in or out. Well, in this case, I'm gonna offset it out by whatever I want my stone cap overhang to be. In this case, I'm gonna call it four inches. So I'm just gonna type in a value of four right here. Well, then you can just come in here and just draw a line back and a line back and because these are all coplanar, this is going to have a face associated with it. Now, one thing I might do is I might double click on that, right click and make it a group so that this geometry doesn't start merging with the other geometry and causing me problems. But then I can just push pull this down by whatever the thickness of my stone is gonna be. Call it two inches right here. But now I've got a stone cap in here. And then this face or all of these bottom faces have all been separated out. So what that means is that means that now I have brick, I have stone and I have siding in here. And so one other thing that I want to do is I want to color in my frames and my doors. So to do that right now, like if I was to come in here and go into my windows settings, or actually it's my glass glass and mirrors. So there are transparent materials in here, but notice how if I try to apply that transparent material to this whole thing like this, that's not really going to work because this is a group. And so if I apply that to this group, notice how it's applying it to everything in this section. And that's not what I want. What I want is I want to double click into this group and I want to apply the glass just to this glass object right here. And then I'm just going to click and drag across this whole thing. I'm going to do a shift click in order to deselect this interior glass because I don't necessarily want to color that. But then for this other object, I'm just going to add a gray color. So we're going to go into colors. We're going to pick a gray color like this. And now I've got my frame and I've got my window in here.
And so we could do the same thing for our door. So we could double click in here. We could take that frame, color it a gray material. You take that door and we could make it a wood material. And I mean, obviously you would probably want to, for a residential style door, do a little bit more detail in here. But this should give you kind of an idea of how you can do this. So now we've got a full on house with a roof, with walls, doors and windows and materials applied to it. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. In the next video, we're gonna talk a little bit about how we might create a floor plan inside of SketchUp. If you do wanna learn more about how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out my course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course, where you can get a lot more help on your particular projects and what you're working on. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.